Sorry if there's background noise in this video. I am running a fan, even though it's not particularly hot today. I like air moving. But I'm continuing the tedious process of sandwiching all of the poster board pieces into the plywood. Um, I am, excuse me, I have the hiccups. I am doing mostly the interior, which is the 1 16th. But on this piece, I haven't covered it yet at all. So I'm covering it on one side with 1 8th thickness, um, bas uh, yeah, basswood ply. And then I will cover the other side in 1 16th basswood ply. But um, I glue liberally and am cutting everything. Uh, it's super solid. I do find that there's a little bit of warping, and I've discovered that now more than um, now that I'm assembling the house because the walls have gone up, at least not all of them, but some of them. Um, and uh, I have not completed assembling those yet, but I will, and then we'll start working on the roof and the floors within. But in the meantime, I am just trimming down pieces to fit the end wall for this uh, for this piece right here. And uh, that is the right side of the end wall of the main house. And that will have a large bump out and will include hopefully the kitchen. I have decided to broaden the bump out and change the window configuration a little bit um, in that design so that I can fit a kitchen in there because I've been wondering how the hell I'm going to do that with the entranceway being where it is. So sometimes I just draw and then I don't really think about what rooms are going to go where. Um, that's the problem with not being a good planner. I am not a good planner. Never have been. Um, I'm good at planning events but not planning things that I'm creating because I'm so impatient to get them finished that I tend to cut corners and not do things um, the way they should be done uh, and you know take my time and plan things out so that they come out well done so I'm just kind of stumbling along on the m most part so uh, yeah so I'm just continuing to cut and sandwich and cut and sandwich and uh, that includes this piece right here and uh, that is the end side on the right, where the big bump out is going to be for the kitchen. So I'm going to have to squeeze the kitchen into a smaller space. And those are all clamped on together. And then I can start working on the other side in the 1 16th. It definitely is easier to cut the 1 16th. Um, this one eighth, it, it cutting it with the uh, with the exacto knife is really really hard. You kind of kill your fingers and your wrist. So thank goodness for my little fifty dollar chain. I mean chainsaw table saw <laughs> um, with the Dremel blade switched out. I, I it comes with the blade that kind of chews up the wood. I know I've said this multiple times, but um, I just want people to know that yeah, it is. It is definitely not like it's designed for, you know, small hobby stuff, but they didn't include a blade that's fine tuned for hobbying. So I went and got a Dremel blade and the little um, center axle thingamabob needed to be, I needed to widen the hole for it because it was a little bit too big. But I did this video again during a live, a TikTok live. so. A lot of it is off the screen because I have to see the comments in order to engage with the um, people who are coming to viewers. So it kind of limits the field of vision. Um, it is better to not do a live and then film it while I'm doing it like above the table and you get a better view and you'll see some of that at the end of the video today. But I'm just cutting along with my little Amazon plywood that I found out is not exactly 12 by 12. It's like 11 and three quarters by 11 and three quarters. So I will have to compensate for some of the lackings there. I will be filling some spaces uh, to compensate for that. But yep. So now we're doing the top piece here. 
on this side. And I'm going to trace, sorry, that was my dog growling. Um, trace the image on there, trace the shape on there, and then cut it out and make it easy. Precision work here as usual. Yep, I'm Precision Patty, that's my, my nickname. And, uh, and I'm also Safety Susan, because as you can see, I'm running this little table saw without any proper protective gear or any type of jig to, you know, keep the blade encased while it's running. Um, the only thing that was a downside on that was that the little thing that came with the, the little protective thing that came with the table saw was um, kind of shitty. And uh, that giant toothy blade caught it a couple times and it chipped pieces of plastic off of it. And so eventually I just had to take it off because it was just kind of a hazard. So it's not very well designed. Um, I'm sure that the micro machine, I mean, um, micro mark machines that they have, I'm sure they're much better. Um, and definitely you can work with miters and angles and you can probably adjust the height of the blade and all that stuff. This one doesn't really have that option. I think you can adjust the height of the deck, but, um, it's not super stable and there's nothing to, to like, I had, I, I can't, I'd have to figure out how to make a jig for it to do things. And a lot of times I'm cutting things that are like way bigger than the table itself, like right now. So a jig is just not useful. So um, if I'm cutting teeny tiny things, that's another story. But right now I'm just using it um, to plow through some of these tedious pieces that I'm cutting. So now I'm working on the left face, well not left face, the left side of the house, the left wall of the because there's like a basically a rectangular shape from which all of these bay windows and all of these bump outs are coming from. So on the left side, I have two bay windows um, that are independent. They're going to be kind of floating in there. So, um, so this is going to be the other side, the other left side of the, the box that is this house. And they are 30 inches tall, um, the, the main faces on these buildings. Um, so I am cutting out the poster board pieces. We I love a brand new blade. It's so nice. It just cuts through this poster board like butter. I just spent the afternoon with my kid um, and two of his friends. So I had three 10 year olds in the car, three, three 10 year old boys, and they were basically like bouncing off the walls of the car. <laughs> I would look in the rear of a mirror and just see limbs flying. Um, and they wore me out. Like, I mean, I'm already tired enough as an older mom, but you know, just having an older mom with multiple, you know, high energy 10 year olds, boy, man, I am burnt out from just hanging out with these kiddos, but they had a good time. We went to the aquatic park and they got to play and slides and jump and you know, jump in water and splash and body surf and climb on a rock climbing wall. So that was a good afternoon. And but now I'm glad we're home. My kids gaming, thank goodness. And I'm using this piece right here to make sure that my scales are all right. And here I'm marking the center of the poster board. Yay. At this point, I was so excited because I was like, this is the, the last of the major parts of the house. Everything else is either a bump out or a bay window. So I'm excited to get to that stage, to the stage where I can put these walls up and start like turning it into an actual house. But uh, I, I need to get this piece done first. So I'm just measuring and cutting, measuring and cutting. Ugh, it's exhausting. <laughs> and I've been asked about that piece of furniture that's upside down there. I built that tie boy. Oof. God, it's got to be like the 90s, maybe, um, from a kit. And um, it's crossed the country a few times. And pieces of it have been broken off. So I think I'm going to try and salvage it. I ordered some legs from uh, Timu or one of those, Wish or AliExpress whichever one. 
and uh, I'm going to try and um, redo that. There's also a little finial that is at the top that I need to somehow maybe return on the lathe or something like that. Don't know. But I'm doing some measuring, trying to figure out where the openings are here for the bay windows. And um, I'm going to just go ahead and cut those in. I realized that it wasn't, it the one on the other side doesn't exactly align with the ones on here once I cut them, but I don't need it to be 100% symmetrical, especially with the bay windows, so I'm not too concerned about too much change here. Here I was just trying to figure out how high the sidewalls of the bay windows are going to be, and uh, I was probably talking to people on the live, and I'm thinking, as you can see, I'm ruminating like, okay, I need it to be this, but yeah. So I'm trying to figure things out and measure them all out. Once I get the poster board cut, I will start with the sandwiching process, which is basically the same cuts multiple times over and over again. And look, I'm using a square. Yay. I bought myself this cheap little set the other day because I keep breaking them. I'm a destroyer of tools. Okay, and I'm measuring to make sure these are all Ooh. calibrated. Oh, excuse me, calibrated. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, stop barking, dog. Anyway, sorry about that. So my narration is extremely casual today. Not as casual it was as it was the other day when I posted on TikTok because it was um, nighttime and I was lying in bed with my hubbo and narrating fairly quietly so I wasn't making too much noise and as I was doing that my husband released an enormous fart like he let the gas rip and it was long and it was on my narration and recording and I was I was like I don't want to do this again so I didn't I didn't do it again so on my TikTok accelerated video of the last one last post that I did there is the sound of my husband passing gas. Of course, in our house, that's not, or you know, unordinary. Um, he's probably the gassiest person I know in the world I've ever met, and um, he like he can empty out like six or seven feet of intestine in one go and do it, you know, without shame. In fact, most of the time, if he's home while I'm narrating, he will sabotage me and and come in and do that while I'm narrating so that. It'll get, you know, most of the time and 99.9% and, and .9 of the time I will erase it um, and start narrating over again. But um, the other night I just wasn't feeling it. So my husband's fart has been immortalized on TikTok. It's barely audible, though, but it's pretty funny. Uh, you know, classy, 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 classy. And here I am jib jabbing again. And here you go. Cut, 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 cut. I wish wood would cut this easily. It would make life very easy. Whoops, I'm hitting the... And I don't know what I'm talking about here. I'm just talking. It's it's interesting when you do lives because you have people commenting as you're, you're going and you're kind of replying to all the comments. And I had to cut out a lot of interruptions. Like one lady wanted to see all the little dolls that I make and dolls that I made. She's like, do you make dolls? And I showed her the little animal ones from the Amanita Cottage and from the Baby Cello. Um, I don't really like dolls all that much, but in the last few years, I've kind of been more accepting since I've given the dollhouses like individual little stories. So there's a Miss Huxley for Huxley House, and there's a Miss Wolf for Wolf Hall. So um, I don't know where she is exactly. Ouch! Get off me, dog. Sorry. Um, I don't know where she is right now, but I'll find her. She's somewhere. Um, I put her somewhere when I was working on the other house, and I lost her. But I will find her. So meanwhile, I'm still sandwiching things. I think I went with this idea of, um, instead of cutting, this was for the exterior, so I wasn't too worried about being imperfect. So I cut all the lines full through. And then I was going to reassemble the exterior like a puzzle. So I think that that worked out better for the exterior. The interior um, sandwich wood, I I cut with the Dremel and with an X-Acto knife. It was 16, 
a sixteenth of an inch thick, so um, it's easier to cut, even though it is plywood. But see how I kind of puzzled everything together? For the exterior, I'm not worried about that because it's all going to get covered in stone, air quotes, stone. Still need to figure out how I'm going to do those. But in the meantime, this is how I'm doing things. Tracing it on. There you go. And the edges. And then I just continue the cut line straight so I can use the, the table saw. Because then otherwise I would have to use a jigsaw, which I don't have, or a scroll saw. Um, but that's like one of the things on my wish list, is one of those small table-sized scroll saws. Because that would make life so much easier. Especially when I'm doing delicate cuts, so, and detailed cuts. Every lady who does dollhouses needs a little tool arsenal. So, a little baby table saw, a little scroll saw, a little chop saw with a miter option. Those are all important things. Like, Harbor Freight has this little thing, this little table saw, and it has a little baby chop saw for 40 bucks, and it has a little miter like little like pivot thing that you can put on there which is great um but uh and i know they have a really cheap little scroll saw too i just need to look at it and i have to be able to rip wood too like rip rip down bigger pieces so i can use them for furniture and stuff and i think a scroll saw would be a good application for that so here i am cutting out the peak of the roof the gable so to speak and glue and so one side is done and then the other side I just cut I didn't see I did it really fast here um, this is from above and I didn't do this on a live so as you can see I just used my time-lapse and cut that piece out with my Dremel much more efficient better view of what I'm doing and here I'm using the X-Acto knife instead of the Dremel, because it was kind of rough. But all those edges will be cleaned up. And there you go. So this piece is fully, fully sandwiched. So once I did that, I was able to start kind of assembling the house. And the first walls are starting to go up. So I, uh, there you go, put in another peak right there, because I had forgotten one. And this is a little piece that kind of connects corner on the right side, but here goes the left wall, and I'm trying to hold it up. And then this here is the main face of the building. There's a little bit of flex going on in here, a little bit of, um, you know, it's not perfectly square or anything like that, but I'll make it work. So yeah. I put up four of the segments today. There you go. So far, it's starting to look like the drawing. It's pretty exciting. Yay!